The first fucking step is diamond ready. Diamond What's ready. diamond ready? Diamond ready means posture. Diamond ready means that you're in a good state. Right? Motion creates emotion. What we're likely going to do, all right, I'm just going to say it. What we're going to do, and we're implementing this as a test, when you're going into the phone zone, at least for the first start of the phone zone, you start by pulling the chair, right? Because motion creates emotion. And you can't move somebody, you can't influence somebody if you're, okay, think about like little, your state starts with your physiology. If you want to, if I wanted to look like this, what do I, well, I'm probably sad, right? But I wouldn't look, if I was excited, I wouldn't look like this. I was, I'd like to do this, right? Literally, your language changes, your physiology changes, everything changes about you based on your state. So the first thing is to get in state, right? They talk about anchoring, but not even talking about high level stuff. You have to be in state to begin. Or else, don't even call the leads. Go to the bathroom and fix yourself, right? Yeah. You can't be depressed and call the leads. That's, that's the first hidden step. So if you want to just put a hidden step here, it's doing whatever you want to call it, but it's just being in state. That's the first one. Right. You gotta be in state. Okay. Diamond ready. Before we go into this, I'm just gonna say a few things. Oh, this is just some general stuff. When explaining benefits and key points, the customer needs to know what this does for them, or else it's irrelevant. They buy things that satisfy their needs benefits that satisfy their needs they don't actually care about the product it's kind of like if we're going to buy this computer and it's two thousand dollars we're not actually buying it because it's computer we're buying it because i can send an email we're buying it because i can facetime somebody off of this mm -hmm. right so you're not going to be like this computer has eight gigabytes of ram and all this memory in it you would be saying you could facetime your girlfriend off of this right that's super basic fundamentals one-on-one -on -one. these are just core concepts and we're going to go into some details here um, in the discovery, your job is to uncover the key benefits of the, what the client wants, uncover the key objections. You don't have to take notes of this because we're going to do a deep dive into this. Mm. If you answer both of these, which is uncovering the key benefits that they're looking for, right? So the feature. So if it was FaceTime and the girlfriend on the iPad, right? And you also uncover the key objection. That's what you can also do in, in, in the discovery, right? The discovery is where we fail a lot because we don't actually even know. I can't tell you how many times somebody's handed the phone to me. And they're like, uh, this guy wants a generation of wealth. Come to find out he doesn't even want a policy for himself. He literally was looking for a policy for his kids and he already is insured, right? We never found out what he actually wanted, which we implemented that question yesterday, right? Where an easy question for the discovery, which we'll get into is, if I had a magic wand today and we could get approved for anything, it is based on approval, it's health and age. But if we can get approved for anything, what would you want this to do for you? What do you want? Just actually asking them what they want is powerful. I mean, not everyone's gonna give it to you on the first swing around, but that's a powerful question, right? Um, um, that could be it, that could be it. The only last thing I'll say is the average salesperson, this is just a national average, the average salesperson works for one and a half hours a day. Yeah, I know that sounds crazy, but actually works for 1.5 hours a day. So they'll get in and uh, instead of hitting the dials, They'll be like, ah, it's a little too early to hit dogs. Let me just get my mind right. Right? Like deep. And you know what? After after they're done here, they're like, ah, I don't feel I gotta get a coffee. Then they go get a coffee. Next thing you know, it's eleven. And now they're about to go into a training or at lunch. This isn't this office, this is actually national. And then they're like, all right, I'll get a couple thousand. Then they get a few thousand. They, they got maybe 30 minutes of thousand. Then after that, they're like, the train's about to start. I can't I can't get on the phone because the train's about to start, because I don't want to be on the phone when the train starts, right? Then then they're in the train. And then they go to lunch, and then they go to something else. Then by the time they get back from lunch, I wouldn't want to call anybody right now because, you know, they're they're at lunch. I don't want to bother anybody at lunch, so I, I should probably wait till the evening. Then they finally start dialing in the evening, and then they, by the end of the day, they only work for one to two hours a day. That's why people are average. That's why we're trying to implement the schedule so we don't have average results. So that's that's part of it too, right? Um, that's that's part of it. And the proof's in the pudding. Ryan dialed 200 dials, even though, yes, he only got one live transfer out of it. But even if you considered he could have had a couple extra conversations, that means it's physically possible to get 150 to 200 dials in the two and a half hours that you worked. We're here for like 12 hours in the no, day. No, no, no. It was like, it was like three four hours. and a half. Four and a half? I came in at five. Five. I left at 9.30. Yeah. 
including the left hands that he had. Yeah. So what was that five? So four. Four and a half. Yeah. Right. Including whatever break he had. But yeah, that's it. So um, all right, that that was just the initial thoughts. Any any thoughts on that? Sorry that I'm great.